Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this Pat Hand Pinball. Now, if you haven't seen us working on it yet, where have you been? We've done video after video after video of it. We did one where we were repairing the insides. We did one where we were repairing inside the back box. We did one where we did just the bottom of the play field because that's where the flippers and everything are. And then we did one where we repainted the play field. Where were you for that one? So if you haven't seen those, go back and see them. But now we're up to the one that everybody likes, where we troubleshoot any problems that come up and figure out uh, what kind of shape this thing's in. So previously, on previous videos, we have uh, actually played it a little bit, eh, just messing around with it, you know. And so by doing that, I was able to ascertain that at the beginning of the game, all of the score reels reset. So whenever we did the back box, we worked on all the score reels and we left them all on like number one or number two. And then whenever we started the game, they all reset. So all of them are at least resetting to zero. So today we're gonna to see if everything's scoring right, if all of the features are working right, if all of the bulbs are working right, and we'll see if we can find anything that, uh, that needs repaired. And then we'll look in the schematics and see what's the deal. What's the deal, Lucille? So, Right here at the beginning, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Why wait to the end, right? Should they wait to the end, Joe? No. Joey said they shouldn't wait to the end. Okay, so we appreciate that. We also appreciate everybody that's been using our Amazon links down below. If you don't know about that, if you click our Amazon links before you buy something on Amazon, it gives us a royalty. So thank you, everybody that's been doing that. And even in other countries now, we have them in, uh, in various countries around the world. So thank you, everybody that's been doing that. So let's check this out. So the first thing that we do is we're going to start the game. And then I have a list over here, a pad of paper. We're right here in our showroom in beautiful downtown Rock Hill, by the way. Right? Right, right in the front door. You could be here working with us. Should I tell him to come by and work with us, Joe? Sure. He said, sure. Okay, so these are our buddies in Gastonia. They print up paper. <laughs> And so they always bring us these notepads back. Bye. We've still got some left for 2019 we're using. So we're going to make a list right here of everything that's wrong with this thing. And then we're going to go through it and knock it out. So let's act like we don't know nothing about nothing, which wouldn't be far off. So we hit start, and it should reset all of the score reels back to zero, especially the first player ones, since all the other ones are already at zero. And then it kicked the ball out. Isn't that awesome? Okay. It also says ball and play one. But wait, that's not enough. We're also going to try to check if all four players work, right? Two can play. Three can play. That lights out. I, you know what? I didn't replace all the light bulbs behind the back glass yet. Four can play. So maybe I should write down three can play light. Three can play light. And it says ball and play number one. Okay. Boy, he's breaking the hell out of something back there. Maybe we'll go back later and see what that is. Um, so I'm basically... Slowly, not with the ball. I'm just going to roll over and press everything on the play field and see what works and what doesn't. So when I hit this, this says buttons score 1,000 points when lit, but they're not lit. Okay. So let's see if they all do it. That one, the button stuck down for a second. That's why it did that. Same with that one. Okay, so they're all scoring, but you were not hearing a sound. Right? No 100 point sound. And that's horrible. Okay, so just to check these, we're just going to see if these roll over to a thousand. So when that gets to eight, nine, it should roll to zero, and the one next to it should roll to a thousand. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, all those work fine. And then we have these, they say advanced bonus 100 when lit. Now watch this, you're gonna love this.
so it's, it's saying advanced bonus and 100 win lit, right? So it is advancing the bonus, which it's supposed to, but it would give you 100 points too if lit. It's only giving us 10. And do you hear that noise? Somehow, it's, it's instead of firing a bell or something for the 10 points, it's firing the knocker. 10 point sound is the knocker. If you don't want to know what the knocker is, I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on this. We wanna roll it from 40 over to 100. Okay, so that did not work. Oh no, they came on. So it is working. <laughs> so 100 when lit. All right, so that was right. So I need to find something that's 10 so I can see if the, uh, is anything 10? Maybe these are? Yeah. Okay, so that's working right. Okay, so these, uh, when I hit, I hit A, what did, what's it supposed to do? Doesn't say, nothing lit up. We gotta figure out the rules as we go, people. So when I hit it, the light goes off. So something's working, right? Turned on our pop bumpers, or maybe they already were. We're up to 10,000. Whatever, we'll figure it out here in a little bit. So all of these are doing what they're supposed to do. We're, we're, our bonus is advanced all the way up. There's probably no way to score the bonus without losing your ball. So the top ones now say button score 1,000 points when lit. They all seem to be doing that, so let's see if it rolls over to 10,000. It does, okay. So all that's working. Uh, target score 50 points or 3,000 when lit. That's fun. Okay, so we're at 590, so it should go to 640, 690, 740. Oh, you know what? That one must be lit. It gave me 3,000 instead. So the light bulb must have burned out. I don't know how to move that. Oh, there we go. These move it. So 50 or 3,000 when lit. So. That's 50, so this should give us 3,000. All right, it's working. But our thousands is not also not making any noise. I have a sneaking suspicion our chimes unit is messed up or missing. Okay, uh, so all of that seems to be working right. So then we have the jokers over here. Let's see what they do. That turned it on and it gave me a thousand points. Same with that one, same with that one, same with that one. Okay. When lit, same player shoots again. And when lit, double bonus, and we're up to 10,000 points. So uh, we've about done everything that's on it. Let's see what this scores. Giving us 10 points, like the other one. Uh, this says special when lit, but it's not lit. That gave us a thousand. And this also says a thousand. That gave us a thousand. So these say ten or a hundred points when lit. Woo! Tried to bite me. Look, that also moves the uh, the um, light up there. Yep, that last one's not lit up. Fifth light out on top. 3,000. Okay, uh, we've never got the special one lit, so I don't know how to do that. Okay, so the only thing that we have left is we need to see if it lets the same player shoot again. Look, it also says the same player shoots again up there. 
And if it gives us 20,000 points, 10,000 are bonus, and then it's double. So we should end up with 43,810 when I drop this ball in. I did that. Did I do that right? I did do that right. Yeah. 43,810. Same player shoots again. It's still on ball one. Now, I think whenever I hit something, it will make that disappear because it'll know that the ball has been launched. So let's hit this top one. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, it seems to be working pretty good. So that's the first player. Now we're going to do the same thing with the second player. Okay, it has jumped over to the second player. Now we're not going to do all of that. Sometimes you can run into a situation where it scores right on one player, but it doesn't on the second. We're just basically going to check the score reels. Okay, that's working. Uh, and then let's hit these that are 50. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, and then if I mess with these enough, it'll get up to... Okay, so that's that. And then how was I getting a thousand? I had some way of... Oh, if I hit this one, since it's it must be lit up, it should give me 3,000. What do you think? They're all working. It's perfect. Let's go to the third player. By the way, don't be confused into thinking that this game doesn't look fun. Well, I had one of these before. It's a very fun game. Okay, so we're on the third player. Okay. Three thousand. Seven. Perfect. Perfect. All right, all that seems to be working right. Uh, let's get to the fourth player. Fourth player is lit up just just right. One thousand. Okay. Fifty points. Perfect. Three thousand. Voila. All the score reels seem to be working perfect, folks. So now we're gonna see if it Gets us over to uh, ball two and goes back to player one. I didn't. I didn't hit nothing, but I guess maybe it hit enough where it could tell. <laughs> All right, so it's on ball two, player one. All that seems to be working right. Okay. Um, so our main problems are sound problems. Seems to be working pretty good. All of the sounds are screwed up. The fifth light bulb on the 3000 is screwed up, and the three can play light is screwed up, which is probably because I never replaced the light bulb. So let me knock this light bulb out first. Okay, we're trying to figure out the fifth light being out on the top 3000. I changed the bulb, I twisted the socket around, I can't get it to come on no matter what I do. So it could be that it's something with this match unit. These are the schematics, and it says top target lights and there are five of them and they get their voltage from a wiper it looks like on the match unit so I need to go look at the match unit and see if see if that's all working as it should it may be that there's a rivet there that it's not making good contact with or something um, you see there's two lines for each one so that means there's two rivets for each one so I don't know, that kind of makes it seem like it wouldn't be the match unit, but we'll see. We'll see what's going on. Since it never comes on, it could just be a bad uh, uh, connection on the Jones plug, too, because the match unit uh, 
I don't know if I think the match unit is in the head, and it has to go to the uh, play field. So um, let me see what I can track down. Okay, so there's a bad connection on the Jones plug. Knock that out. That was a pretty easy one, though. So next up, we had the three can play light uh, not working, but that's because I haven't replaced any of the lights in the back box. Now, this is an interesting one because the, the back glass is actually in very nice shape, but it has slightly flaked in some areas. We had another one back in the day. This one is much nicer. You can see how it's flaked just a little bit. So you can seal the back of these with triple thick. Spray paint them with triple thick and it will make it where it never gets any worse. So that's what we'll do with this one. But uh, because of the certain areas having some of the paint missing, what they've done is they replaced all of the, the bulbs behind the figure with these flash bulbs. They just flash on their own. Now remember this is an EM so it doesn't have any kind of CPU to make a bulb flash. So it's just uh, the bulb heats up. When it does, the filament opens up and it turns itself off, and then it cools off, and then it heats up, and it turns itself, the filament touches again, it turns back on, heats up, cools itself off, over and over and over again. But it's a little overkill, there's a lot of them, people. So what I'm going to do is, just for to try it, I'm going to take the flash bulbs, and I'm going to put them behind the name. They had them removed from behind the name, there wasn't anything there, because they basically were trying to hide that there's wear, right? But I think that it's minor enough that it's going to look good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see that one is where it says Williams, so we'll leave that one. I think it's minor enough that we can get away with the uh, regular bulbs and the flash bulbs, but we'll see. So I'm going to move these flashers over here to behind the name. Now, you're basically giving it kind of an attract mode. But it does it the whole time. It does it even when you're not, even when you're playing the game too. So uh, those bulbs will blink behind the name. But we're gonna we're gonna make the uh, the lady, which is a really beautiful picture there. We're gonna make her just solidly lit up. On a lot of these games, whenever they were supposed to have flash bulbs from the factory, there would be a uh, like a domed out spot so that the the round bulb of these flashers could fit in there. You can get flashers now that don't even have that round bulb. But usually you can tell if they intended for there to be flashers because the little spots for it will be will be carved out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put regular bulb, I'm going to replace all the bulbs with regular bulbs and I'm going to put the flashers behind the name and that'll be that. And then we'll see how it looks, just make sure it doesn't have one where the bulb is particularly blinding through a bare spot in the back glass. And people ask us all the time, about LEDs and heat. I just don't like the way the LEDs look. And yes, I know there's some that are cool white and warm white and all that. I just don't like how they look. So I don't put LEDs in mine. I put just regular bulbs. Deal with it, people. If you buy one, you can put whatever the hell you want in yours. This one's mine. I'm putting regular bulbs in it. Um, it's just, it's old. It doesn't look right with LEDs in it. That's my opinion. So about the heat, the original bulbs were 44 bulbs. Bulb number 44. We put 47s in it, which uh, reduces 40% of their, their 40%, they use 40% less power. Theoretically, that would lower the heat by 40%, or the additional heat by 40%. So, that's what we do with that. That's our compromise, all right? Also, the ones like this that have chipped and things, usually that's, be uh, not chipped, but uh, flaked, usually that's because of improper storage. Somebody left it in a outhouse <laughs> a storage building something like that so uh, that's what we do we put the slightly less bright bulbs so they don't make as much heat gives you the same nice look okay we fixed the fifth light and uh, it's up 3000 and now we're doing a three can play light look what I've done with our beautiful back glass Much better. Keep the flashy stuff down there where it's supposed to be. You don't need this twinkling. So it's flaked a little bit. But it looks just fine lit up. So I don't know why they did that. Come on, people. 
Matter of fact, what the, I've got so many in the pad hand, there's five. That might even be overdoing it. Wasn't I saying before that I thought those were weird? They weren't blinking. as They're blinking too fast. Remember I was talking about that? Let's see what these are. So these are... Nope. I can't read it. That says they're 455s. Hmm. They're blinking a lot faster than the 455s I'm used to. 455... Phillips 450. Yeah, they all say 455. Okay. So they are 455s, but they blink a lot faster than the ones I usually use. Okay, so we need to see if the three player light lights up. One can play. Two can play. What? I feel cheated. Okay, so the coin unit down in the bottom is what determines the one can play, two can play, three can play, four can play lights. And it's just as simple as that. So it might be the rivet that says three can play, or it might be the wire, so it could be another Jones plug, so we'll check that out. And the way you can test that is, just kind of wiggle the Jones plug connectors while the light is supposed to be on and see if it comes on and goes off, or if you get any kind of action. So that was in fact it. So we'll uh, we'll try it again just to make sure. We'll let the game in for the game. So once you're off the first ball, you can restart the game. Okay. Ball's already over. <laughs> One player. Two player. What the? You just saw it, right? You just saw it. Okay, on those Jones plugs connectors, the female part, if you need to clean it, this is what you need. So I just cleaned the wire for that one, which I had already cleaned, but I must have not got it very good. So this is a brush for a... <laughs> I'm not allowed to say what this is a brush for, but this is to clean the inside of a... Okay. So... The three is on. As you can see it, let's try it again. One can play. Two can play. Three can play. Four can play, people. And that's what takes ours from, you know, the normal level to the next level. You got to get everything working. All the lights. All of it. Okay. Our three can play light is done. So, you saw what we've got going on. We've got no 100 point sound. We've got no 1000 point sound. And the 10 point sound is the knocker. So I think I know what that problem is. Let's check it out. As suspected, this is a 1975 Williams and the chime unit is completely missing. So if you see this little thing here, so it says knocker and chime jack. And so it's showing you how the thing works. So the knocker plugs in up there. And then you skip two connections and the chimes plug in down here. There's three chimes. So there's one power wire and then three signal wires to make the three different chime solenoids fire. So what they have done is removed the chime unit and then plugged the knocker in where the where the uh, chimes unit was so that it fires on 100 points. <sighs> that ain't gonna work. So I need a chime unit. Where could I find a chime unit to put in this? So it's a Williams. And it's a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. He did like well over 100 games, so it's a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back one. Where can I get another? Oh, hell! This is a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. I wonder if there's a... Let's see, where could I find a... Where could I find a chime unit? Huh. 
This one ain't got one. That ain't gonna work. Damn, I thought I had it. Williams that Christian Marsh did to Beck Lancel. Williams. Oh, wait, but this is a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. It's locked. So luckily for our timeline here, this all of these are the same in Williams for many, many years. So this one is the exact same unit that would have been in the uh, pat hand that somebody stole. Now, I don't know why somebody would have done that, but I just did the same thing out of the Jubilee. Now I'm going to order one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a used one to put in the Jubilee. Don't worry about it. But uh, this one's going to go in our pat hand. Um, it needs it needs fixed up a little bit though. <laughs> That's pretty pathetic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clean it off a little bit. We're not going to go cray cray, but we're going to try to clean it off a little bit. The actual uh, the actual um, plungers aren't stuck, so. <laughs> okay, so uh, basically we just need to get it to make uh, to sound better. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, and then we'll take these apart and check it out. So remember, folks, big one, medium one, little one. So I'm taking it all apart. I vacuumed all the crud off of it that I could vacuum off, and then I'm gonna wipe it down too. But so what happens is these things have little rubber grommets. That's just like a Excuse me. I have little rubber grommets that's just like a little uh, spacer to keep the bar off of the uh, the metal. To isolate it, you might say. And over time, they dry out. And then they crack away and they disappear. So that black stuff you're seeing in there is probably the remnants of it. So what happens is the bar ends up resting on the metal here. And it makes it sound like crap. So let me see if I can fake it. Well, come on, cooperate. All right, so this is what it sounds like. All the buzzing and stuff, it's because it's slapping the metal. Right? And they have this little sleeve so that the bar can't hit the metal that's supporting it. Okay? But all that's dried out. You see how nasty this one is, but it's just metal, so it won't really matter. Makes me wonder how bad the inside of that Jubilee is going to be, though. So, to take these things off, you usually do it with two hands. But since I'm a pro, I'm going to do it with one hand. So you need to bend the thing a little bit so that it can go past that metal thing. And then you just pull it out if it's not all corroded and corrupted. Blech. Come on. It's your home. I mean, get out of your home. Come on. Damn, I felt sure I could do this with one hand. Well, you get the point, folks. So when you get the plate off, there's these little nylon rings. And so their whole purpose is to keep the bar from touching the metal plate up above it for the same reason, so it doesn't slap around. You don't want it to slap. You want it to peel. You want to peel. You don't want a, a slap. Okay, so let me clean up this a little bit. So I'm cleaning up the bar a little bit, and it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, so you can see where the bottom of it has gotten beat up by the plunger hitting it. But what's going on is 
uh, so that's 50 years worth, you know. The, the plunger has, is supposed to have this little nylon piece in it. But those come out a lot of times, right? And so on this particular one, it's just been the bare plunger with the nylon piece missing. It's been hitting this damn thing for a long time, however long ago it fell apart. And so that's not optimal either. So look at what somebody did. So basically you want a piece of some kind of nylon up here, right? So they took a twist, electrical twist cap, and put it in upside down, which will work perfect. So I'm going to go see if I've got any. Boy, I'm proud of that. I think that's going to work perfect, people. You can buy those. But why would I want to do that and then wait around for them and everything? Come on, I got the... This is perfect. This is a perfect idea. Whoever came up with this, I salute you, sir or madame. Whoever whoever came up with that idea is brilliant, okay? So we're going to drop that in there. Drop that one in there. I'm going to drop this one in there, and I don't see why that won't work. So I've taken just good old post rings and put here. And then what I like to do is, we beat on this side for 50 years. Let's flip this sucker over and beat on the other side for the next 50 years. <laughs> right? What's wrong with that? Um, and then sometimes you can fit another ring on the top and sometimes you just put the plastic back. You can kind of do it both ways, you know, and just decide which way you like better. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna clean this up a little better, though. Um, if you if you hold the thing too tight, it won't be able to vibrate, so it doesn't sound right. So you need it to be able to move a little bit, but you don't want it to hit anything metal because that'll dampen it. So that's how it looked after we get it cleaned up a little bit. See, they're, they're loose enough that they can move around, but they can't touch any metal. So, You people with uh, golden ears, can you tell if that's off-key a little bit? Mm, I don't know. It would be sharp. So my whole thing is I'm wondering if these are perfectly tuned whenever they leave the factory. And if they, by losing a little bit of metal, whenever the plunger beats on them, I wonder if it makes them go sharp. Because this, you know, the uh, the smaller one with less material is a higher note. So if this one loses material, eventually it will sound like that one. Or maybe it's just the length, I don't know. You would think all that would matter, though. So when it loses a little material, does it make this one a little bit too high? And this one a little bit too high? And this one a little bit too high? They don't really sound sharp to me, and they, they, they reverberate, which, you know, I think usually it does better if it's dead on a note. I don't know. So let's see how the plungers sound with our little nylon uh, things on it. By the way, you can buy all this stuff. You know, if, if you don't like the, the hack nature of this, go buy it brand new. That's how that one sounds. That's how that one sounds. And just so you can see that it's the orange thing. <laughs> sounds pretty good to me, people. So I'm going to go bolt it in the game and um, we'll play it and see if it sounds like the chimes are working. So we mounted it back in right where it goes, original holes and everything. And I moved the uh, harness around and plugged the knocker in where it goes and plugged the, plug the chimes in where they go. So let's try it. Boy, it looks great in there, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like that's how it's supposed to be? Okay, let's see if we've got it. I think we'll just do it by hand first. 10. Ah, hundred. No, that was hundred. Ten. <laughs> and how do we do a thousand? Oh, three thousand. People, 
Our chimes are back. thousand. They're all working. Okay, folks. So, it looks like we've got it all up and running and everything's doing what it should. So, uh, got a few things we need to tweak. Got some cosmetic issues still. But all in all, this is a running functioning machine so uh, we will end it at that we'll do another video of us after we get it all done up of us playing it so you can see what the what the gameplay is like what the score set the rule set is like um, and we'll see how she flips you've only seen me flip it with one hand so far right So we'll uh, we'll do another video of us playing it. So thank you to everybody who watched. Leave your comments below. Like I mentioned before, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think so far. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it.